Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa. This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous, keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah. This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Wow, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Such a joy once again to be connected to you on your favorite Gula devotion. This, of course, is your center for biblically authoritative teachings. It has been an amazing week looking at a subject you can change anything. What has your life been over the past years and decades? Have you been saddled with a particular situation in terms of health, finances, family, academic, business? Even your growth in Christ? Are you saddled with a sinful state? There is nothing in this life that cannot be changed. If you are in Christ, you need to get this. If you have really been born again, it's very important to know that you are never a victim. You see, a situation may be such that medically, there is no help. But the question is, medicine is not the apex of life. Especially maybe said that financially, according to the economic system, there's no help. But the truth is, the economic systems of the world are not the final capping of life. So no matter the field of life that the situation is about, the physical is not all that there is. The economy of a nation was so bad, women were boiling their children for meat. I still cannot imagine how that was possible, but it did happen. And the minister of God said, tomorrow by this time the economy will change, and it did happen. In other words, yes, men have their ends. So scientific discoveries can get to their ends. Medical science can get to its end. Economic strategies can get to its end. Governmental powers can get to their end. But there is always the supernatural, the far above level. And the one born of Christ is in the class of God. You are now operating in that far above category of beings. So don't join humanity to accept that, oh, it's okay. Oh, it's okay. So some people, they call them secular. And they accept that, oh, that state is unchangeable. Not when you are born again. Some people that call Kofi broke man. In other words, a Kofi that is a broke person. And he likes it. Don't accept such names. Some people know that, oh, they can't amount to anything. Somebody just know that, oh, this marriage will not work. This child will not work. I mean, don't accept such. You can change anything. Were we just saying this as motivational speeches? No, we told you the way. You must be born again, transmuted from the human species into the divine species. That becomes the solution. The moment you are divine, the Bible says that he that is born of God overcomes the world. The next thing to do is to desire strongly to change the thing. How such a strong desire to change it that no no can be accepted as an answer. Then number three is go into the word of God and find out what the Bible says about that circumstance. So if you are a child of God and you need help to know what the scriptures say about a circumstance, that is the proper direction you should look for. Not to be going to be able to just prophesy to you or give you whether evangelistic direction or apostolic direction or prophetic direction that has to do with something else but telling you what the scriptures are concerning the matter. Because that is what you need to meditate on until you agree with God that indeed these things can be changed. Then when you get to that level, you arise. If you know all these things and you are still sitting down doing nothing about the circumstance, it will not change. 
when the church was sitting down, James was killed. But when they rose up, Peter was preserved. Hannah came for Shiloh every year. Her situation didn't change. But the year she arose, the situation changed. There must come a day, a season in your life when you arise and say, I'm going to do something to change this. Now, when you rise up to say, I'm going to do, it's not to go to a juju man. It's not to go to a malam. It's not to go to somebody somewhere who is not connected with Christ. The arising here is to make a decision to apply biblical principles. And the biblical principle is to engage the principle of changing situations, the principles of making things happen. And I showed you that there are two of them. One that babies in Christ can engage and one that the mature in Christ can engage. Of course, if you get born again now, you'll be a baby in Christ because of what you know and what you don't know. And that's not a mystic. Everybody goes through that stage. Of course, you can be privileged depending on the caliber of the message you have received and the family you come in to mature so quickly within a day in the spirit. But if you just receive Christ and you don't know much about the things of God, God says that Jesus showed that you can ask the Father for a change in that circumstance. And if you do it genuinely with all your heart, because it is based on his word, you are going to have that change. There will be that divine intervention. Jesus says that that is possible. But if you are not mature a bit, you don't need to go to the Father to change circumstances on the earth. The Father has positioned you instead of Christ. Jesus said, the works I'm doing, if you believe in me, you are going to do them and greater because I'm going to be away and you are going to replace me. So in the name of Jesus means instead of Jesus. So you face the circumstance now. Jesus met a fig tree. The fig tree was telling him something. He didn't want it. He responded. Now imagine it is your day today and a situation is telling you something that you, didn't, you don't want according to the word. What do you do? You respond. And how are you going to respond? You respond based on what the word of God has said. You call forth what you want it to be. You dematerialize what you don't want to be, to be gone. Because you have the ability. The Bible says that God that made light to shine out of darkness. He didn't make light out of light. It was out of darkness that he called forth light. So in the midst of sickness, you call forth health. In the midst of paralysis, you call forth walking. In the midst of barrenness, you call for childbirth. Are you getting that? In the midst of a business going down, you call for its upward upgrade. So, it doesn't matter what is going on. You can call something out because as a child of God, you are positioned with a nature that has the capacity to create by God's word. This is why you have to be born again for these principles to work. And it doesn't matter what it concerns. It doesn't matter what it has to do with governmental dimensions, legal dimensions, economic dimensions. You can change any circumstance, I'm telling you, according to God's word. That is why the knowledge of God's word is so important. So I put something here because a, a Christian who is matured can say, okay, instead of putting... Um, uh, 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 the word to work. Let me just ask God because that's another method God can do. If you are mature, you keep on asking God to Jesus come. Nothing will change. Not because God hates you because there are dealings at different stages of age. I always give this example of a two-year-old and a 12-year-old. They have the same father. They are all playing inside the house. Then the two-year-old rushes. Daddy, I'm thirsty. The daddy gets up, gets in water from the fridge. He goes back to play. The 12 year old comes. Daddy answers it. Daddy says, Go and open the fridge and take the water. That means daddy hates the 12 year old. Different age, different dealings. Hallelujah. So today, we are going to move forward to see how to round it up. After you started engaging the principles, something else happens because some of the things which have been there for long may not just change overnight. You see, for instance, if somebody had, let's say, um, hypertension in his body, and then that hypertension has been there for 20 years, by that time the heart is getting enlarged, the vessels, depending on the cause, may be becoming thickened, and a lot of things might have started changing in the body. If you start putting the word of God, except it is an instant miracle, you are going to still have Maybe the heart appearing on, on, on scan and on x-rays as a, a, an enlarged heart 
for over a period. You may still feel the beating of the heart or the, the blood pressure may, may still show that it's above as you keep on putting the word to work. So now, what people often do or what the devil does is when they start putting the word to work over two days and nothing changes, three days, one week, then they slam back into the position of defeat. That's what I'm about to share with you what the Lord is bringing here today. The topic is be composed. When you start engaging either God, whether you're a babe, or you start calling for things to be, or you're putting the word of God to work in, uh, uh, instead of Christ, whichever way it is, when you start doing that, become composed. Maintain your composure in the spirit. Because you have already determined that the thing should change. You already have a place where you have desired to a place where it is yes or yes. And you have agreed with God that it can be changed. So you don't move to this level and then do small and then give up. No, you have to maintain your composure. And that's what we'll be discussing today. Father, we thank you for the light of your word today. And we know that these words have made us and we can change anything in our lives. Praise God. Hallelujah. So be composed. And our scripture today is 1 Samuel 1. Remember, I read to you about Hannah and I said I was going to come back to that scripture. Good. So verse 18 said, and she said, let my handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. I love this story because it has so much to learn. We put here that there is a way a person looks when he or she is tired and very thirsty. But after quenching the thirst, he looks different because something has changed. Is that not true? That's true. If you are engaged in something and you are very thirsty and tired, you look some way. But when you get some things to quench your thirst, your look changes. You are refreshed. Hallelujah. Now we put here that in the same way, if you change a situation, your composure must reflect it. So for instance, you want to change a circumstance and you have started engaging the principles of change that I've showed you, it means the circumstance has actually changed. The change may be at the root level, which you may not see. It may be at the ground level, which you may just begin to notice. Or it might shoot into the stem or the leaf level. When Jesus responded to the tree, the disciples heard it, but they didn't see anything immediately. It was the second day when they were passing. Then they saw the tree. The Bible said that it dried from the roots. Jesus knew that the moment he responded to the tree, it started drying, but nobody could see. Most of the times when you start to change a circumstance like this, it begins to change from the root level. But many don't know how to maintain their composure to see the thing to manifest from the root level to the leaves. So they give up and the thing goes back and becomes worse. So we put here that every visible thing you see today came from the invisible. You need to understand before you can see a lady and say, oh, this woman is pregnant, do you think that was when she got pregnant? By the time you say this woman is pregnant, that she's been pregnant for about three, four, five, six to eight months. Nobody knows the day she gets pregnant. It's so invisible and you can't even feel it. But the pregnancy began. Are you following this? So the fact that you don't feel that you are pregnant the first one week doesn't mean you are not really pregnant. You see, so many of the things that manifest on the outside have an invisible beginning. If you read Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11, I'll say that we understand by faith that the words were framed by the word of God and the things that we see did not come from the things that are visible. So in the same way, for your circumstance, that became what you are seeing now. It didn't begin from there. There are some people who are going through something, they actually created it themselves by their own speech. The thing was not there. Look at Job. So the thing that I greatly feared has happened. Who created it? It was Job that did. There are people who keep on talking fear and disease and divorce and they keep on talking these kind of things and business not working and the world is hard and after three years the thing condenses on them and they are now struggling because they created it. In the same way, if you want to create a new circumstance, it may take days and weeks and months and sometimes years to replace the condition. There are some that will change instantly, but I don't want to promise you that because if you start that one and it doesn't change overnight, you give up. Because sitting here, 
I have changed things within minutes, I've changed things within hours, things within days, things with, uh, within years, and there are things that I'm still changing over decades. And I can't tell which is that. Are you following this? So you must have a composure when you begin to change the thing. You should know that the change has begun and maintain your composure. So we said here that changes of situations begin first in the spirit before they appear in the physical. You must know this. If you are waiting for the physical thing as your evidence, you almost always give up. And that's what I said that. Whatsoever is born of God has overcome the world. And this is the confidence that overcame the world, even our faith. What is faith? Faith is the evidence of God's word, the conviction in the evidence of God's word, not the conviction in the evidence that you see. So it means that if the element of being convinced in the evidence of God's word is not in you, you will not live as one who overcomes, even though that is your nature. That this is the victory that overcomes. This is the instrument of victory. Conviction in God's word. Faith. So that thing has been there for 10 years, 5 years, and you want to change it, and you have started engaging the word of God, and you are not seeing anything. You should know it is changing. Why? Because one, you desire the change. Two, the word of God has said it, and you agreed with God that it can be changed, and now you have a reason and you are taking action. That thing cannot say no. I wish I could share examples with you, but time will not permit me. There's nothing on this earth you cannot change. So with me, there's nothing I cannot change. So whatever it is, whether it is present or it is yet to come, if it shows up, just know that listen, I can change it. We have changed verdicts. There are, I mean, many things. There's nothing you cannot change. So men can gather and say, we are doing it and nobody can change it. It, it, can, it cannot change except we say it cannot change. As long as we don't talk, what are they are saying doesn't matter. When we talk, what we talk is what will happen. Why? Because of these principles. You can change anything. So I can change anything. Praise God. We said that some changes may take time to appear physically, but you must know and be, and be appropriately composed. Then let's come to the example of Hannah now. If you look at Hannah, the moment the minister of God said that, go, and the God of Israel answered you, she said what? And she said, let thy hand may find grace in thy so she, So the woman went her way and did it. And her countenance was no more sad. Remember, I read it to you in the previous episode. She was crying. She was sad. She was not eating. Then she went to pray. When she prayed, a baby didn't fall down from heaven. She only met a minister of God said, the Lord will answer your prayers. With that alone, her countenance changed and she went to eat. Oh boy. Question is, did someone suddenly appear when she went to pray? No. But why was she no longer sad? Because the reason why she was sad is she didn't have a child. And she still didn't have a child. How can her countenance change? You see, you say, oh God, I've been praying, I've been praying, and, and I still don't have it. So you don't want to be happy. So you don't want to believe it is there. Ask Hannah. When she prayed, she wanted a child, right? Yes, and she prayed. Did she have a child? No. But how come her countenance changed? And the countenance couldn't change except she knew something changed. How did she know something changed? Because she had prayed. And the minister of God confirmed her prayer. Because that was how it worked in those days. All right, let's go. We put it that Because she knew the change had taken place in her spirit, so she knew that these are spiritual things. I prayed with my heart and the minister of God came and said, the Lord of Israel shall answer my prayer. They believed. So she believed that that prayer was answered. And that's why her countenance changed. There are people are praying about something and they keep on talking. The person's leg is, he can't walk on the leg. Then he prays, oh God, I want to wonder. So this is my leg. I prayed and I don't even know. Oh, this is my leg. It's not working. This is my leg. Every day, oh, this is my leg. This is my leg. You are not going to walk. Because you are always keeping that leg under your speech in the same condition. Somebody is praying for a job or has spoken a job into being. And then he meets colleagues and says, oh, Charlie, oh, what's up? Then he says, oh, Charlie, oh, no work, oh. We, know, we have written applications. We are still waiting. And yet he engaged a principle and created a work. I've shown you how to do that. 
By his speech, he just canceled it. Your countenance must show that things have really changed in the spirit, like Sarah did. We said that you must do this because you are engaging spiritual principles which could be disengaged by your own thoughts, your own speech, and your own actions if they are counteractive to the results. So imagine that you've been what they will call jobless, which shouldn't be so, for years. And after listening to this message, you decided to change that situation. And you began engaging the principles. But a work hasn't appeared immediately, or you have not yet started something immediately. And you meet colleagues and they are talking about unemployment. Don't include yourself in it. Because if you talk yourself into that stage, or you talk about yourself as somebody who doesn't have the job or the work, you are, your speech is counteractive to the results you have in the spirit. And you neutralize what has begun. So we said that you must learn to maintain the composure of change in your thoughts, in your speech, and actions after you change things in the spirit. So most people are around us, and they think we talk, uh, they think we are talking, we are bragging or something, because they don't see you having something, and you say you have it. So you can say, oh, I'm, I'm already here, I'm doing this. And they are, they are physically, they're not seeing the thing. But it's not because you are just trying to say something and uh, psychologically calm yourself. It is because you are testifying to the spiritual resource you have because of the principles you have engaged. So, if you really want to change that circumstance, step one, develop a desire. You get a place where it is yes or yes. Step two, Get into the word. What does the Bible say about this circumstance? Gather the scriptures. Meditate on them and to say, yeah, I know that this is what God is saying. This thing can change. Arise. Now I say from today, I'm going on a journey of changing this thing and I will not stop until I have the results. And take an action. Depending on your maturity, either you go into intensive talking to God about it to do it for you or you face a circumstance and deal with it yourself. Then when you have done that, you come and start announcing. You declare, I'm this. This has happened. That has happened. They may laugh at you, but not long you have the testimonies. If you declare, you know some people like to do their declaration in secret. They pray fervently in the secret. secret. But when they come out, oh, you know, uh, yeah. so they think that oh, God knows that they are just being nice to the people. It's not like that. When David met Goliath, if you are so, Goliath, I know that you are a big man. Hey, I'm just coming with a sling, you know, but I know inside me that I'll kill you. That's not what David did. He told him boldly that today I'm going to cut off your head, even though he didn't have a knife. It's a principle. Imagine you've been watching me over these days. I pray for you in the name of Jesus that you are well positioned to change that chronic circumstance in your life. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Please go back. Have these messages as your, in, your, in, your, in your bank. And listen to them over and again until the steps are clear in your spirit. And apply it to anything that is contrary to scripture in your life. And you'll be amazed. If you're watching me, you have not received Jesus. Everything begins with being born again. This is God's plan. That is where life in God begins. Every human being was born a human. But God's plan for every human being is that once you're born a human, you must receive Christ and become a son of God. If you haven't received Christ yet, you are still a human. And you have not yet stepped into God's plan for you. What does it take to receive Jesus? Believe that Jesus is that person God appointed that man will receive him and be born of God. No other name. Bible said there's no name given under heaven by which people can be saved. Neither by which people can be born of God. And how did he make that possible? He reconciled the world by dying and getting raised from the dead and he ascended. As we speak now, he is the Lord. He will come for the church and soon return to judge the world. If you believe this, declare Jesus as Lord and you'll be born again. Say this after me for another. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe with all my heart that you are God's appointed person by whom I can be born again. I declare today that Jesus is the Lord because I believe that you were raised from the dead and ascended into heaven. Hallelujah. If that is with all your heart, you are born again. Make sure you get planted in a Bible teaching church and remain in Christ until he comes because Christ will soon show up. So I'll meet you again on our next episode as we look at another subject. Life is good.
Enjoy. Glory, hallelujah. The School of Relevant Ministry with Dr. David Binden under the auspices of the Final Global Movement will be running a six-week free upgrade and certificate training for pastors and church leaders starting 9 January to 6 February 2021. Classes will run from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturdays only. The first session will be held in Ho in the Volta region. Pick your application forms from the Greater Life in Christ Ministry office. Ho, opposite Golf Land Station, Ho Banquet. For more information, call 0242-577976 or 020-253-6118. Don't miss this opportunity to be upgraded in your ministry and be made relevant. Enroll in the School of Relevant Ministry now. Thank you for joining today's episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bindan. The Good Life Devotion is proudly brought to you by friends and partners of the Final Global Movement. For more information on how to become a partner, call us on 055-792-7744 or log on to our website, finalglobalmovement.org. Become a partner today and contribute to the global spread of God's message for the now. Follow us on our various social media handles and you will be blessed. Don't miss the Good Life Devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bender. Life is good. Enjoy.